Theranos raised $1.4 billion in funding and didn't ship a single device that worked. From black turtlenecks to steamy text to an inexperienced company president and a dermatologist posing as an imposter lab director, the ongoing trials is unraveling one of the craziest Silicon Valley stories that we've ever seen. Today we'll talk about the incredible story of Theranos and how it went from a $9 billion company to nothing. I'm Samanve and welcome to the control room a tqm original series where we break down the hottest headlines in tech and culture meet elizabeth holmes from an early age you could tell that she was different from her peers she started her first business in high school selling c compliers to chinese universities she picked up mandarin during her summer holidays and she interned at the genome institute of singapore as a freshman however her claim to fame was real-time cures her first company at stanford which pitched a way to extract lots of data from a single drop of blood the motivation for the company was Holmes's fear of needles. Despite the idea being rejected by a number of medicine professors, she managed to convince her dean to join as the first board member. Soon after, Real Time Cures was renamed to Theranos. Elizabeth Holmes was obsessed with Steve Jobs, to the point that she started dressing up in black turtlenecks. However, her true superpower was her charisma and her ability to raise insane amounts of money for products that didn't exist. She managed to raise a total of $1.4 billion in funding, with the first round being $6 million just after two years of founding Theranos. Not to mention, she managed to form the most illustrious illustrious board in US corporate history, with the likes of former US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and James Mattis, a retired four-star general of the Marine Corps. Holmes's success in raising venture funding, along with her ability to put together a strong board, brought Theranos a great deal of publicity. The icing on the cake was the signing of a $400 million deal with Safeway to transform 969 of their stores to include blood testing facilities. Theranos also managed to secure a $140 million deal with Walgreens to open 40 wellness centers. Following on from these huge contracts, there was no stopping the accolades. I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Holmes. The real treat, the incredible Elizabeth Holmes. By 2014, Holmes was named the youngest self-made billionaire, and she appeared on countless cover of magazines such as Forbes, Fortune, and Inc., which dubbed her as the next Steve Jobs. On the outside, Elizabeth Holmes was changing the world and leading Theranos to greatness. So how did it all come crashing down? In 2005, Theranos hired Ian Gibbons as the first experienced scientist to lead the development of its blood testing devices. During his tenure at Theranos, Ian became quite concerned with the accuracy of these devices. He was getting worried about some shady practices at the company, like the information siloing between departments for the sake of secrecy, which instead reduced work transparency, and the senior management reprimanding staff for questioning the accuracy of these devices. The key whistleblower to raise concerns about Theranos devices was Eric Chung. She was a lab assistant for Theranos for seven months. She's a key witness in the ongoing Theranos trials. So a clinical laboratory is where you actively process patient samples. And so before I would run a patient sample, I would have a sample where I knew what the concentration was. And in this case, it was 0.2 for tPSA, which is an indicator of whether someone has prostate cancer or is at risk of prostate cancer or not. But when I would run it in the Theranos device, it would come out 8.9. And then I'd run it again, and it'd come out 5.1. And I'd run it again, and it'd come out 0.5, which is technically in range, but what do you do in this scenario? And this wasn't an instance that I was seeing just one-off. This was happening nearly every day across so many different tests. She testified that at Theranos, she was encouraged to cherry-pick results to give off the impression that the devices were more accurate than what was really true. Tyler Schultz was another Theranos employee that raised concerns about the device results. After he quit, he lodged the first formal complaint about Theranos' lab practices to the New York State Department of Health. And in 2014 and 2015, Erica and Tyler served as primary sources for John Carreyrou, who would ultimately publish a Wall Street Journal article exposing Theranos. In the article, Carreyrou remarks that Theranos' own Edison devices 
regularly failed quality control checks. During the same year, Walgreens and Safeway suspended and called off their deals. A big loss for Theranos. Walgreens now cutting ties with the embattled blood testing company. The drugstore chain says it's ending a partnership with Theranos as regulators mull whether to impose sanctions against the Silicon Valley firm. Fast forward to March 2018, when U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged Elizabeth Holmes and Balwani with fraud for raising more than $700 million dollars from investors through an elaborate years-long fraud in which they exaggerated or made false statements about the company's technology, business, and financial performance. They had also claimed that in 2014, Theranos had generated $100 million in revenue, when in actual fact, they had generated around $100 thousand dollars. Holmes settled with SEC by paying half a million dollars in fine, forfeiting 19 million Theranos shares and agreeing to not be an officer or a director of a public company for 10 years. A few months later in June 2018, Holmes and Bawani were indicted by the US government for committing multiple counts of wire fraud. If convicted, they could face up to 20 years in prison. In the same year, Theranos closed after failing to find a buyer. The Theranos trials were originally scheduled for July 2020, but they were pushed back due to the pandemic and the birth of Holmes's first child. The trials finally started in September 2021. These trials have been nothing short of a reality TV show. We've seen a string of steamy and poetic texts between Holmes and Balwani. These messages go against Holmes's plan to accuse Balwani of abuse. A more shocking claim is that 40% of the tests were done using normal vein draw samples, which is completely the opposite of what Theranos stood for. It was also found that Bawani had asked his dermatologist Sunil Dhawan to act as Theranos' lab director. He was hired to replace Adam Rosendorf, who was a board certified pathologist that spent every day in the lab. In contrast, Dhawan only spent 5 to 10 hours in the lab from November of 2014 to the summer of 2015. Theranos is a cautionary tale for Silicon Valley. It teaches us to look beyond the theatrics, venture funding, and powerful board members to get to the crux of the product and the claims made by tech companies. What do you think will be the outcome of these trials? Let us know in the comment section below. Meanwhile, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video. I'm Samanve and I'll see you next time.